If you're anything like I was not too long ago, you may be thinking, what's the point? Why would anyone be so restrictive? Or, I would never do that. And I understand. I want to share with you a lifestyle that I previously believed was about restriction or a trend, but I now know to actually be about abundance and health and joy and love and compassion. Let's start with what it means to be vegan. Donald Watson, who was also the person who coined the phrase vegan in 1944, and he defined it as follows. The word veganism denotes a philosophy and way of living which seeks to exclude, as far as possible and practical, all forms of exploitation of, and cruelty to, animals for food, clothing or any other purpose, and by extension promotes the development and use of animal-free alternatives for the benefit of humans, animals and the environment. If the vegan ideal of non-exploitation were generally adopted, it would be the greatest peaceful revolution ever known. I am not here to be your enemy. What about your bones? That's a marketing ploy. If you look at the science, milk does not appear to protect against hip fracture. The hip fracture rates are highest in populations with the greatest milk consumption. Eating animal protein increases IGF-1 levels, which increases cancer risk. The irony is that the iron and the protein are what the industry boasts about. What happens if you put cancer on a vegan diet? Now, even the blood of those on a standard American diet fights cancer. I mean, if it didn't, everybody would be dead, right? Um, it's just that the blood of those eating vegan fights about eight times better. Now, this is for prostate cancer, most common uh, cancer among men. For women, it's breast cancer. Now, they didn't want to wait a whole year to get the results, so they figured they'd try to see what a plant-based diet could do in just two weeks against three different um, types of human breast cancer. This is the before, um, cancer growth rates powering away at 100%, and then this is after eating a plant-based diet for just 14 days. This is before and after measuring cancer cell death, right? Um, this is the before, and this is the after, pre and post plants. Yellow greasy deposits of fatty material called atherosclerosis. There it is. Oh. America's number one killer, right there before your eyes. Today, the food industry uses the same tobacco industry tactics, supplying misinformation, twisting the science. The same scientists for hire paid to downplay the risks of secondhand smoke and chemicals are the same hired by the National Confectioners Association to downplay the risks of candy, and the same hired by the meat industry to downplay the risks of meat. This is a failure of political will to take on big business. If there's one thing we learned from tobacco experience, wrote one district judge, it's how powerful profits can be a motivator, even at the cost of millions of lives and unspeakable suffering. We can't wait for society to catch up to the science because it's a matter of life and death. A lower risk of chronic disease, fewer allergies, fewer surgeries, we're talking, um, uh, fewer varicose veins and hemorrhoids, even fewer hysterectomies, uh, not just uh, less heart disease and stroke and high blood pressure and diabetes, but less diverticulosis. Right, that's the side effects of a plant-based diet, less disease overall. You say you really want to stick to a plant-based diet. Three trillion dollars in annual U.S. healthcare costs. Uh, more than 86% of those are pretty much from chronic diseases, those diseases that you can prevent. Prevent and often even reverse. In our 38 years of research, we found that these simple lifestyle changes can actually reverse even severe coronary heart disease, can slow, stop, or reverse the progression of early stage prostate cancer, can reverse type 2 diabetes, can even change your genes, turning on the good genes, turning off the genes that cause heart disease and prostate and breast and colon cancer. Contrary to popular belief, humans are best suited to be herbivores. When looking at psychological and physiological features, we are herbivores. In 1812, there are 1 billion people on the planet. In 1912, there are 1.5 billion. Then, just 100 years later, our population exploded to 7 billion humans. 70 billion farm animals humans raise. The human population drinks 5.2 billion gallons of water every day and eats 21 billion pounds of food.
But just the world's 1.5 billion cows alone drink 45 billion gallons of water every day and eat 135 billion pounds of food. This isn't so much a human population issue, it's a human eating animals population issue. Hydraulic fracturing for natural gas uses an incredible amount of water. A staggering 100 billion gallons of water is used every year in the United States. But when I compare this with animal agriculture, raising livestock just in the US consumes 34 trillion gallons of water. Animal agriculture was responsible not for 18% as the UN stated, but was actually 51% of all greenhouse gases. Gas from livestock is 25 to 100 times more destructive than carbon dioxide from vehicles. So my calculations are that without using any gas or oil or fuel ever again from this day forward, that we would still exceed our maximum carbon equivalent greenhouse gas emissions, uh, the 565 gigatons, by the year 2030. Without the electricity sector even, or energy sector even factoring in the equation, all simply by eating, raising and eating livestock. Single largest contributor to deforestation, land use, water scarcity, the destabilization of communities, world hunger, the list doesn't stop. It's an environmental disaster that's being ignored by the very people who should be championing. Because they're, they're membership organizations, you know, a lot of them. They're looking to maximize the number of people making contributions. You're going up against people that have massive legal resources. A lot of people just keep their mouths shut. I don't know that I would want to comment on that. To feed a person on an all plant-based vegan diet for a year requires just one-sixth of an acre of land. To feed that same person on a vegetarian diet that includes eggs and dairy requires three times as much land. To feed an average U.S. citizen's high-consumption diet of meat, dairy, and eggs requires 18 times as much land. This is because you can produce 37,000 pounds of vegetables on one and a half acres, but only 375 pounds of meat on that same plot of land. I also learned the comparison doesn't end with land use. A vegan diet produces half as much CO2 as an American omnivore, uses 1 11th the amount of fossil fuels, 1 13th the amount of water, and an 18th of the amount of land. After adding this all up, I realized I had the choice every single day to save over 1,100 gallons of water, 45 pounds of grain, 30 square feet of forested land, the equivalent of 20 pounds of CO2, and one animal's life every single day. I just recently read this story about this Nazi. His name was Ernst Goebel. He and his men were executing children one day but he didn't like the way his guards were grabbing kids by their hair before they shot him in the back of the head and tossed him in a mass grave. And I quote, kill them in a more decent way. Humane slaughter, humane rape, humane slavery, humane holocaust do not exist. Why protect one and violate the other when neither one wants nor deserves the abuse. Carnism must go. It's why we see the evil in trophy hunting, but miss the evil behind breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Today, carnism is normal. Like once slavery was normal and racism after that, but the majority is not right because it's the majority. Carnism must go because there is a monster out there. A monster that rapes mothers and eats their children, flays its prey alive to wear its skin, that laughs as it chews the flesh of sons and daughters. That monster is human. I once thought they were crazy, malnourished, extreme, how self-righteous a leader can an individual be. And then one day I met a nice man and I was completely shocked to find out that he was one of these crazy ass vegans that I was just talking about. He said if you could live a life that was filled with health, happiness and success too, without causing harm to any other beings, then tell me, why wouldn't you? I did what I could to try to prove him wrong. But humans need meat, our ancestors ate them, we need protein to keep us strong. Vegan food is too expensive, I cried. Each question I presented was calmly refuted using only true logic and facts. I soon found out that all of my arguments were unfortunately full of holes and cracks. I took responsibility for my existence, I made a choice, I used my voice, I made a vote and I took a stand. And once you get this voice, it's like learning to speak again. You soon boil over with passion. You want to tell everyone. You want them to see it, to feel it, to also take action. There is nothing extreme about choosing life over death. And we're not as crazy as we seem. If you give it a chance, you'll see what's true. All 
all out war against these animal activists who are simply saying that we don't need to kill these bulls in such a vicious and horrible manner. In fact, we don't need to kill them at all. You can actually hear the cries of a young calf. <laughs> And then as his cries fade out and he dies, you hear the audience clapping politely as if they were at the ballet. Only 100 billion people have ever lived. Seven billion people live today. And yet we torture and kill two billion sentient living beings every week. Today, one billion people are hungry. 20 million people will die from malnutrition. Cutting meat by only 10% will feed 100 million people, and eliminating meat will end starvation forever. Victor Hugo said there is nothing more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Well, animal rights today is now the greatest social justice issue since the abolition of slavery. One is reminded of the reply given by somebody when slavery was abolished and one of the people against abolition said, What on earth is going to happen to the families of the people who make the whips if slavery is abolished? Well, the obvious answer to that, they are given more profitable and humane work to do. It would be certainly a different civilization and the first one in the whole of our history that would truly deserve the title of being a civilization.